All right. Excited to be with you tonight. I got the team here. Um, two amazing men of God um, with some amazing um, men and women, um, sons and daughters, and uh, brothers and sisters. Uh, excited to be here at RIM as we navigate through these 12 spiritual principles. As uh, we walk on Facebook, um, you know, please share, please tag. Uh, we love you. We appreciate you. I can't see to interact, but I will um, uh, do my best later um, to interact. Know this. If you put a prayer request, even if there's not a response, there's a response in heaven because we take it before and we always take that time to make sure that we're praying. We have a team here that also is watching that strategically to be praying. So um, if you have any prayer request at any time, um, just don't put unspoken. I don't need to go in the Holy Ghost. I need to target the hit. So by faith, I can access what is needed to be that one that says the prayer or the righteous one um, that prays. Amen. By faith, it will take place. So um, Jesus has made us righteous. So excited tonight. Um, um, I'm excited that as we are not checking the list off, but are on our third and final foundational piece of our house this week um, as we started off with honesty. Uh, honesty uh, puts us in the position of right standing with God. Hope gives us the ability to see um, the person of Holy Ghost, uh, Holy Spirit, um, but not just a person, but what he brings us to, what he says. Hope says I can have it. In other words, it's obtainable. The Holy Ghost begins to take us through Scripture. He's speaking to us. He's bringing us under the Lordship of Jesus. And we're coming literally aware of the who he is and the originality of us. So the cool thing is we can find the real us, the, the new us, instead of having an identity crisis um, be caught up in a, a compulsive, um, a, a toxic compulsive behavior, which is addiction, um, you know, in many different facets, not just drugs. Um, so, um, overcoming abuse, I believe everybody, they can speak for themselves, but they can overcome some levels. And the one thing I had to learn, it wasn't that I just had to overcome abuse. I also had to process through where I had um, not so much intentionally, but because of my agreement of my toxic and my abuse, then began to, uh, that began to hit others. Um, I began to do the same thing to others, um, but it wasn't my plan. So with that, I'm excited tonight for, um, we have been interviewing through this uh, series of coming through the 12 spiritual principles. Um, and, you know, we got... Um, a mighty man of God, he handles our media side and does so much behind the scenes that, um, you know, everybody knows you. People that even travel into the ministry or, you know, that we do different things or around the globe or around the nation, they know you. And the cool thing is, is what I love this day when you accepted the assignment to, to be here with us, you're always here with us, but this type of assignment, um, when you speak, people listen and the profound wisdom you walk in. And it's not like you've just been here a day or two. You know, you in charity, um, your lovely wife, y'all come to the ministry right after Shane and Haley um, as uh, some of the elders in the church here. And so I'm excited to be able to interview you because you've been through these multiple times. You've taped almost all of them um, and uh, put them online and getting it out to other people. So you have so much that you've done behind the scenes um, but as you've done that, also I'm excited to see what they have done. Maybe I can even learn some things from you tonight um, uh, of what the Holy Ghost has done through these with you privately. Because you're a very private person, but when you speak, it carries weight. So I'm excited. So I want to welcome you tonight. Um, Dave, I want to honor you. Appreciate you so much. Um, i got Joshua, also a spiritual son, and just excited that... Uh, to see uh, where mine and Dave's life may not be exactly the same. We may have come from a similarity of the streets, but also at the same time, these things are not just for the addicted, 
Um, you know, uh, and I believe Dave will even be transparent in that. But you coming from a similar background as me and everything. So I'm excited to have you. You have not only uh, been a participant, but you've taught these. Um, you've taught it in teams multiple times. And then um, you and your wife taught these um, the last time I believe you taught them. So um, the, the cool thing is, is uh, you, these things are so applicable because when it is God, God is faith. <laughs> it, it, it can't be a gift to us unless He is. He's faithful, right? And so when um, uh, when you look at these, um, and He has now given us this, when we when we navigate through, um, the greatest thing you can do in your marriage is go through these twelve spiritual principles uh, together. Uh, if you have an issue at work, go through it together. And I believe it's not a checklist, it's something that builds. So this is our foundation, and any house has a foundation. So that's what we've been working on. One thing about a faulty foundation, eventually over time it will begin to crumble, and it's unstable, it's unlevel. And I believe by checking and being aware and going through these, what you can do is be self-aware. You can check the inventory. You can look at different areas because things that God shows me now is not things He could have shown me back then. It would have overwhelmed me. I would, I would, or I would have been irresponsible in some areas. And some things I would have just probably suppressed. But He taught me that I suppress first. Then He's teaching me things that, hey, to help me um, walk in soberness um, every day, not just in the beginning, right? So I'm excited. I want to welcome y'all here um, to be with us uh, um, through this. Our, my first uh, question tonight um, would be, um, we know faith uh, is uh, from, uh, is literally the ability to go from the natural realm into the supernatural. So now I'm not operating from my natural, but from my spirit, which is in Christ Jesus, according to Ephesians, right? So with that, um, you know, hope says it's obtainable. We talked about that. So if you was working this, um, what was taking place is if you had something that was insufficient, you, could, you should have been looking at something of the sufficiency, but now my insufficiency, I look to the sufficiency of Christ Jesus. And the Holy Ghost is now making this possible. He's building me in this. And now, by faith, I access it. By faith, I'm not just seeing it's attainable, but faith releases it now. So with that, Josh, what? One of the hardest, I believe, through my growing, about growing in the Lord was how to explain faith. And I'm not asking you to teach faith. I'm asking you, what does faith mean to you? What has it been like on this journey over the last three and a half years of you? as you said, Lord, to Jesus? So that's an amazing question. And even as God has been in the process now of stepping into more uh, a dependency upon Him, uh, when I was in the world and everything, I was dependent on me. And it was, everything is in my control. I can make the money. I can I can make this happen, this, that, and the third. Whatever that may look like. But when it comes down to it, faith really begins when I end. Like, I, I, whenever, when I'm at, like, I'm with him, and I'm like, Lord, I just can't do this no more. I, I, he gets, that's where the, the, the runway of faith is that I need to tap into it, because now I have to have him. He becomes really my source, because I'm at a place of dying that I need to tap into faith to tap into the source, in the, the sufficiency of who he is in the promises, of whatever the situation is. That's powerful. That's powerful. I thought that was that good, um, but it isn't. Um, so, uh, as far as what they're playing the guitar, the kids are. So, that's amazing. Um, I love it. I know it's supposed to be more professional because we're live. But we do real life around here. We don't put on a show. It's so powerful, the runway. Um, when the runway of you ended, then by faith you access because it's all in you. And it's okay if I play it. Um, the, uh, so... I love, I love the value of what you brought to that. Our spiritual navigation, and I like to always explain this because we got the spiritual principle of faith, but we have um, a spiritual navigation. And what I mean by that is if you are online, and welcome again. If you're just coming on, please share, please tag, communicate with us. The more you comment, um, the more you 
um, do those things, um, interact. Um, it, number one, it, it gets it out to somebody else, um, but also it lets us know more. And we know that you was there. It wasn't just 250 views um, in an hour. We know that you was there. So, um, if you want us to come to this physical building and you didn't know how to get here, we have this witty invention um, that God gave man, and uh, you, we have an app that then we're able to what step by step get here. So in walking in faith, in our, and we being a new, and walking out that new, through, through what I've learned is there's times I get emotional and I get in certain pressure. I need to figure out how to get back to the new. I, and what I'm not saying the new ever left, but some of the old that needed to die. And it's only by faith that I really can let that survival go to live out of that new place. And so with that, is this spiritual navigation is the same thing as the it is a uh, a nugget or a direction step by step to then begin to walk out from your rightful seat, from your place in Christ Jesus. So made a decision. So I was honest with God. Then I had a hope, and I have a person that's leading me, has all power, has everything we need which is the Holy Ghost, and now I make a decision to turn our will and lives over to the care of God through Jesus Christ. So the beauty of this, there's so this is so simplistic, and it would be easy to read that, but there's so much more in there. Because to make a decision to turn my will and life, I don't see Jesus just as a mystical something or someone out there that one day I'm going to meet him on the cloud. But he is now brought off the cloud to me. He's in me. So for me to access that continually and walk from that place by faith, is a, he don't just come my Savior. He's always my Savior. He was saying to me before he became Lord. Lord is a conscious decision. And so to turn our will and lives over to the care. And that's what I love. Care. He cares for us. I believe it was uh, Peter that, that penned it. Cast all thy cares upon him because he cares for us. So it's saying all my insufficient, my anxiety, my brokenness, my hurt, my where I want to do it. Whatever. And now I'm releasing it to him in the sufficiency of his cares for me. Is now what's released back to me. Of God through Jesus Christ. So, I want to ask this as a question here, David. Um, so what does turning your will and life over to God really mean? What does that mean today, Smith? Introduce yourself to the world, into this room, and to a whole other caliber. What does that mean to you? Turning your will and life. What did that mean to you? Well, to me, turning everything over to the Lord is like
that you would hear people say that, right? Um, like, just turn it over, right? Yes. But it's amazing when you tap into that care. Yeah, it really is. It's, it's, it's a matter of turning it over sometimes, you know. It's, uh, it's hard to do that at times. But once you do it, it's, 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 great. it's a great feeling. Amen. Um, so, uh, would it be safe to say this? Because I believe a lot of people interchange faith and trust. Would it be safe to say, and this is just a question to you through your journey, that faith actually builds on trust? Because faith is now accessing the King of Kings in this area. This, so, I'm used to cares and actually handing it over to them. Um, does. Uh, uh, Every time I take a step of faith, or every time you take a step of faith, sometimes we don't see what it is till we're kind of already went through some things. Um, is that would that be fair to say that faith building my faith in God actually builds my trust in God? Yes, that would be very fair. You know, um, I think that the more, like I said, the more you faith you have in Him. It's going to just, that trust is just going to keep building, keep building. And even when you, that's sometimes may lose a little bit of faith, but you know, if you, tr you trust them so much that you may lose that faith for, say, a day or so, but you trust them so much you easily get back into, okay, I'm over my, out of my emotions and just, Get you back on the right track. Mm -hmm. If you have trust. So faith gets you back on the right track. That's so profound. Somebody tag him on Facebook with that, please. Um, write it in the comments and put Dave Smith beside it because faith gets you back on track. Um, one thing I believe, and I believe it was something that God's given me the ability to birth here and what we're talking about as we go through these. Um, a lot of times, um, we need more teaching on the soul realm. And this is really addressing. If you go through this with us as you're on Facebook, you really will navigate through this with us. What one thing I've learned is this gives us tools to actually be able to process and and, and identify and um and know even though man, I may not have been having a whole lot of faith there. But faith is my access point to get back on track. That's so profound. Um, Jeremiah 17 and 7 says, Blessed is the man who trusts in the Lord and whose trust is the Lord. For he will be like a tree planted by the water that extends its roots by a stream and will not fear when the heat comes, but, it leaves, it, but its leaves will be green and it will not be anxious in a year of drought, nor cease to yield fruit. And it goes in. It's all this beautiful. It's giving us this beautiful analogy. It's giving us this beautiful picture, right? I can just picture that tree on the side of the river. And then it says this. The heart is more deceitful than all else and is desperately sick. Who can trust it? So it's giving me this analogy and this practicality which is a my trust in God, but without my faith in God and me here in His heart, I could be led astray from my own deceitfulness in my own heart. That I'm desperately, it says, <laughs> sick, but in Him I'm whole. So asking this, it says, who can understand this? Now I want to give context to this. This is Judah's sin and rebellion. Judah's sin and rebellion was rooted in their character of their dependence on human capabilities, resources, and false idols. This leads to disappointment, failure, um, spiritual poverty, and ultimate loss. So this is the chosen people. And Jeremiah, the weeping prophet, is pinning one of the hardest 
letters, but the most hopeful letter. Because it's sometimes 70 years would end, right? And there would be a restoration to them. I, I want to, out of hope, uh, help you understand, you may be in hope for a while as you're on Facebook. Josh, I know through the journey, there's been seasons that you was you had hope. But when faith kicked in, you began to access some things. And with that, walking through this by accessing by faith, what does, as God Holy Ghost begins to lead you about your heart, what, what did that mean? What did that, as God began to show you your heart? In other words, this is, He's made you new. But I don't know about you. I will speak for you, in other words. But after even I surrendered my life, I still had some issues. I would get emotional. I'd want to suppress them. I would, you know, I have these things going on. So with that, navigating, because I'm instantly made new in my spirit, but I, my soul's still jacked up. Lack of better words. Take us on a little bit of a journey of what that means. Give us a snapshot of what heart as God began to unveil the soul to you. So, growing up and everything, even uh, young adulthood and even up until uh, encountering the Messiah, there was walls inside of my heart, there was so much trauma, damage, and all these things. And um, so it was amazing that y'all tied and running parallel hope and faith, I'm sorry, trust and faith together. Uh, because y'all have saving faith, and we have a measure of faith. But the saving faith is when he encountered me with a needle in my arm, and I just said yes, because whenever I hit rock bottom, I found the rock. You know what I'm saying? So, the, 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 but the realization is, is, like, if all we needed to do was get saved, and that was it, we would go ahead and ascend. But he started revealing things to me in my soul, in my heart, that was so uh, damaged and broken lenses, so I would see certain people a certain way because of my past traumas, uh, even PTSD on certain things, and all these things. And so I, won't, I don't want to lie to you and say it was an instant thing because trust is built, it's not, it, 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 it isn't automatically there. Saving faith, each person has it. But through that, we begin to, the more faith you begin to tap into, all of a sudden encounter happens. All of a sudden it's breakthrough. All of a sudden it's this. So while all that's happening, your trust in God begins to build. Because if you have walls and you want to allow people to put to such a distance, we not intentionally put God at that same distance. And so what it really looked like was a day-to-day second second by second relationship with him. Because there were certain seasons that he knew I wasn't going to let him up so close. But slowly but surely, I promise you, he is a persistent God. He is a, a, he is a patient God. And he will just, he will just, he, will, he knows when to put pressure on certain things, but he knows when to let up on some things. So it's truly, a, a, it's like an onion. <laughs> and it comes in layers. You allow him to come closer and closer. As that faith, you step into newer realms and newer dimensions of faith. And uh, the, 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 the higher you grow in faith, the higher the trust is built. And what it does is faith is really this. I let go and I relinquish it. Those things of trauma, those things in my soul, those things that was hurting. And, and I felt like I can't let nobody in, not even God. Because of faith and the levels of trust, you allow me to come in. Because... Insanity is doing the same things over and over again, expecting different results. And that's what my life was. Like you said early on, is everywhere I went and every person I came in contact with, I reproduced hurt. I reproduced pain because of the traumas inside of me. So I just came to a place of like, I'm sick and tired of it, sick and tired. And I'm like, if, if I can trust him with my salvation, if I can trust him this little bit. He would speak to me, trust his voice. Then slowly but surely, I would get there. And I would come in and tear down walls of trauma, tear down walls and broken lenses. And uh, But I want to encourage somebody, look, it's not a the deliverance and salvation. is an overnight thing, but these things, he wants to walk with us. He says that we have to walk out our own salvation through fear and trembling. So I want to encourage somebody, like, look, it is a day-by-day. 
day by day thing. Do not be discouraged if you feel like you've been doing this and it's like I'm so stuck in this, in this hurt place. But I promise he wants to deliver you. The moment he delivered me from drugs, he's still the deliverer over my soul. So I want to, that's what I want to say. And that's what it looks like. It's day by day and it's season by season. But it's a building thing. It's a trusting and it's a relational thing. It's so powerful. Um, even as you ended that, you said um, he's the deliverer over my soul. Um, it's so profound. And when you have, that's a revelation. That you can have a knowledge. You know, he says, I make you whole. Spirit, soul, and body. For me, no spirit, soul, and body. But when you come into the revelation personally that he literally is not just the deliverer that deals with a demon and deals with addiction, because that's a toxic, compulsive behavior, which is even talking about their, um, their rebellion and Judas' sin was rooted in character dependence on human capabilities, resources, and false idols. Addiction is a false idol, right? It's a identity crisis. Um, abuse is false. Even though it was the reality of, this is the cool thing, hope says this, I know I was abused here, and it's still painful. Somebody can say certain things, and like, mm, you, 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 you know, you will hang on now. And you start to get fidgety without speaking. But with that, Hope says, now I can see it in Christ Jesus. I read it in his word. He spoke to me audibly. He spoke to me through the wind. He spoke to me however that facet was. And I know this is obtainable, but faith now takes me from seeing it to being it. Faith takes me from here, out of my soul, brokenness, into my spirit, holiness. Does that make sense? And that's what I was hearing you say. He's the deliverer over my soul. He is the Messiah, so he's the deliverer. So in that place that he touches, he's not abusing you, hurting you, trying to take something from you, but to give something to you. Um, and so I love how you said that. It's powerful. Y'all can quote um, Evangelist Josh on that. Um, he is not only, um, he don't just cast demons out, but he is also the deliverer of my soul. It's powerful. Um, so when we look at this, and we start to talk about, a lot of times you think about heart, and everybody's just like, that's, that's all you hear. Then we hear people write these amazing books, and I love them on the mind, for we have the mind of Christ. But we still operate sometimes out of the old mind, right? The carnal mind. Um, but I want you, I want to I take this a little diff, diff, deeper for some, especially um, the ones in the room, of course, y'all heard this. But also the ones online, this may be a revelation to you. So we're talking about the heart. So we think about that, and that's where we go to. Then, and God did separate heart and mind, speaking and addressing them. But as a, what I like about this, I'm going to use an analogy. you got a CEO of a business, but he trusts a council around him. You have a COO, a CFO. Um, he, he has all these different members. So I want us to think about heart as a CEO. And then you have a council of the mind and the soul. And the council could be that, we'll say it's the COO. Um, what you're thinking is where you're headed. But your mind is, in, you have access to the mind of Christ. You have a sober mind, the word says, right? But... If I've got a mind that I'm going all wild and crazy in my mind, that means my hope is I can get back to a sound mind. My hope is I, not only at times and at church or every once in a while, I have the mind of Christ, but continually I have the mind of Christ. And then, then I have my imagination. He said, pull out vain imagination. So a vain imagination is not good, but a pure imagination is good, right? So that's another counsel. That's how you dream, in other words. That's how you get out the box. Faith, well, is you get out of the box, but sometimes you got to dream. You got when he speaks and shows you, you got to begin to allow that counsel of the imagination to say, yeah. So I can imagine something, but faith takes me to the imagination of the purity of what God already had written. Will. Jesus prayed that very beautiful, not thy will. Not my will, but thy will. Right? 
So to say you got free will, that's a lie. The moment you say Jesus, your Lord, you have now come in and your will aligns with His. But my will sometimes gets out of sight of His will unintentionally. So now I can come into the counsel of restoration that my will aligns with the will of the Father. That's been the prayer, right? Um, so that's another counsel. And then we got emotions. If you're broken, it's in your emotions. We can say the mind's broken, of course. But if you're hurt, it's in your emotions. I can remember when I started, I looked at that big old sheet and I had said, man, I got all those emotions. I only thought I had three. Shocked. I wouldn't go on that I was hurt. I don't think I knew hurt was an emotion. I thought it was just like a wound, you know? Uh, and, uh, and, and, and mad, you know? Uh, but mad is like a final place. Angry is like a final emotion. There was multiple emotions I've learned through study. That's scientifically proven, but also that is a hurt is a kind of a, uh, a you had multiple emotions before then, if I can say that. And then conscience, Paul told Timothy, he said, be of good faith and have a clear conscience. And I believe conscience is key in the council because that's where our spirit man is now hearing the Holy Ghost in a hope of navigation, right? So I want us to talk about this like as if what council the CEO, CFO, and all the other councilmen around, every time you go to make a decision, your conscience, your mind, your will, your imagination, and your emotions are responding to a decision. So if that's the case, if we can get to the revelation of this and understand heart is actually is responding in a place of mind, will, emotions, imagination, and conscience, that is a person's inner being. So what's the old saying? Follow your heart, right? Yeah, I don't know if y'all heard that, but I heard that all. Just follow your heart. Even lay down my heart, lay down to Jesus. Just follow your heart. Isn't good advice? If the heart isn't in communion with the Father, the heart of the Father. Now, we love the prophetic here. Some people get scared on one side when you hear the language prophetic, and then other people get real goofy. But prophetic is the heart of the Father. If we could simplify something, if you hear me say prophetic, I don't, I, I'm trying to get you to what's already been paved and given access to for Jesus that I do nothing but what I see the heart the Father do. So now because of Christ, Jesus has given us access to what the Father's doing. So, human nature le leans towards selfishness. It will even seek out a way contrary to God. The human heart can only be transformed by God. So, it's much more than just He made my spirit new, but now my soul's being restored in those councilmen. They got to go to the rightful seat. They got to operate from my heavenly seat instead of the old broken person, in other words. Um, Proverbs 14 and 12 says, There is a way which seems right to man, but it ends in the way of death. So, there's things that seem right to me still to this day. But I guarantee you, there's some of those things, if listening to the wrong council member, the old man, I could be headed on to the way of death. I could be come out of navigation of what God wanted me. So with that, verse 10 coming out of 17, where we just come from, Dave, it says, I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give each man according to his ways, according to the results of his deeds. So when we begin to look and navigate through this day, and it talks about these. First thing people, when they read it, they automatically see deeds and they automatically think Old Testament uh, and now they think law. But Jesus made it possible because it doesn't say faith. It doesn't say my work saved me, but because my faith now has given me access and saved me, my works will be produced because I'm hooked up to a new source. I'm coming from a new place, right? I'm a new person. So, by faith through this, um, uh, and you look at court to the, to, according to the results of his deeds, even me walking with Jesus 
and you walk in with Jesus day by day, second by second day. Um, through your life, have you still seen results of deeds? Have they all been cloud nine? Have they all been everything just been beautiful in the midst of this? Or has it been tough at times through the process of walking this out when he talks about according to the results he gives them eat to each according to his ways? Has everything just been glorious? Back on 
Um, share with us about some of that counsel. Has any of that ever been able to come to um, uh, to life behind the scenes while you're processing eternally this walk of faith?
his nature and his and the trust that um, that he is there for you and would never hurt you. He is not capable of hurting. Hear me today. Maybe you don't believe in a God tonight in your own Facebook. Maybe you're struggling to stand in faith tonight. Maybe you're struggling from the pressure of life around you. I want you to hear me. He is not capable of hurting you. Much of the pain we face in recovery is all based on false fear of being harmed. And now that we can't self-protect with our addiction anymore. We have to trust God with our life management. Every aspect of it. What is life management? This means where you live. And some people say, I live where I want to live. Well, see where they get you. You said insanity earlier that's saying doing something a different way, uh, the same way of expecting a different uh, result, right? Me separate of God is insanity for me. Because I expected something different, but it always come back to the same results. But with God, the hope that He is to me, and the faith I access that hope with, there is always supernatural results. There is always an immediately or a suddenly that comes in my life. And so, we have to trust God with a lot of this. This means where we live, where you work. This is what America has done to the people. And I ain't saying this is what being my separate from the true living God has done in America to the people that say that. Make sure you're in school. Make sure you play all these sports or some facet. It could be man or whatever else. Make sure you go to college and then you have that career. That is the life of America. I'm not against school. I'm not against any extracurricular activities or what could be a career for me that are playing sports, right, um, professionally. I'm not against extending your education into a field. I believe in that. But if that's my only focus, what am I living for? Those don't feel what I did are not those compartments of my heart or restore those compartments of my heart. Work was a suppression. You said family, you could be around people and family and friends. You would suppress work, if you're not careful, will be your suppression. It will be your idolization that causes you to get up in the morning and wish it was evening. And when you get to work, you're in the evening, you're wishing it was morning, right? So when we look at this, where you work, your marriage, your children, your family, your money, your health, your habits. Your friends, and most of all, any addiction. So, I love this analogy. I want to go give it to me. Um, and I want to jump back to you, Josh. We must stop wrestling with the Holy Spirit for the steering wheel of the car, representing our life or trying to give Him direction from the back seat. When we are approaching a bad spot in the road. Now, I look. A bad spot in the road will cost you a lot of money. It will knock your front end alignment out. It will bust the tire. It could cause you to take a beer off and tow your car, right? So we can mess up life in that facet, right? But now that I've given my life over to God, and I know Holy Spirit as a person, Josh, or what? And now you're sitting in a different seat. And you're no longer driving the car. But he's driving the car. Now I can't stay in a backseat driver. Or a right front seat driver. <laughs> or a middle front driver. I don't like Siri to chime in. <laughs> but navigating through life. And you was talking about earlier the soul. He is the deliverer of your soul. When he now, you begin to say, okay, this is the boundary that I put to self-protect. But he says, this is something I want you to take down and have faith in me and let me access you. You're talking about soul earlier. 
But when that bad spot in the, you let it down, you was in private, you spend time with it, right? And man, you feel good. Right? You got the tickles. You know, you may even flop in the floor by the Holy Ghost hitting you with some power and some deliverance. But then life happens. And it would be easier to put that wall back up and say, you know, I see this bad spot and I would rather take the stairwell. What is that like to you navigating through this and through how he is, been, is the deliverer of your soul as you testify? Um, how is it for you? Give us some wisdom of not grabbing the steering wheel. What is it that you cannot even tell him how to steer the steering wheel? So, so as you were speaking, I literally saw like a Tesla. And Teslas have this amazing uh, technology that if there's about to be a collision or if there's something that you're headed into that you should not hit, it veers you out of the way. And some of the things you don't even see, because I will be passing certain cars, and you'll literally see uh, uh, certain lights flashing. They may, I might be in their blind spot. But that is what it means to literally have him in the steering of your life. It gives you such a peace. They literally have vehicles, we're talking about vehicles now, that will drive themselves. So literally, and I can they testify people taking naps as they're going down the road and allowing these vehicles to drive themselves. But I want to let you know that whenever you're navigating through life, as my brother said, whenever you are in the passenger seat of your life, and as an adult, as even a human being, it's such an incredible, hard decision to do to say, you know what, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm relinquishing all of my control. I'm saying, I trust you. I have faith that whatever the destination is, I'm going to get there. That, that you haven't expected it for me, you know what, I'm going to allow you to take control of that. So what does it look like? Is because even if I was driving that fancy Tesla, and, and I, certain things we don't see, but God is the all-knowing. And if we can allow Him to take control, it will be just like the, the just as an analogy of, of wisdom of whenever that Tesla's about to, when, if you're trying to get into the wrong in the lane next to you, and you don't see that car in that blind spot, that bump in the road, you don't see it. That thing will literally take you back into the right lane and get you back on track. And so what it does is it gives you a level of such peace that, you know what, even though there is a bump in the road, he led me in the past bumps. He, he, he navigated me through. And even out of ignorance or even stupidity, when I do hit them bumps, Come on, we can sum on that. Look, we sometimes feel like they're not that bad, but as soon as you hit them, you bottom out. But even whenever you bottom out in life, He is so faithful because that is who He is, and because we have a relationship with Him and we trust in Him, He was faithful, and we take, a, we begin to put ourselves in the passenger seat and allow Him to navigate through our lives again. So, what does it look like? It, it, it's a place of of peace. It truly is a peace of peace. And I want to encourage people, look, just because it is that simple, it is that simple, does not mean it is easy. Sometimes the easy, the simplest things are the hardest things to do. Because whenever we're wide open that things, like, I got this, Lord, I got this, Lord, and we continue to, like, hit that same speed bump over and over again every single day. But God, when we step into the wisdom of God, by faith, we tap into Him and allow Him to navigate our lives. He will literally show us another route to, to avoid certain speed bumps and rough patches in, in life. So I would truly believe that in that. Stepping, allowing him out of faith to navigate through our life, being in such control of it, it brings such a peace. And, and it's just, it's a beautiful, beautiful thing to be able to, to, to surrender to him. So that's what that means. So, Because this is where, when you tie hope and faith together, and you see results. Just because you have somebody in your blind spot, or you have a light that goes off and even though it veers you back, and that's you out of resistance because we think we need to get on over. Our destination didn't change. Eternal life with God doesn't change. But how easy is it Sometimes navigating through real life, what you're talking about, 
all of a sudden, we got somebody in our blind spot, but God protects us. And by faith, we may not understand what we're going through and why there was protection, and we didn't even realize it as protection. Because think about this. We're talking about emotions and mind and all this good stuff, right? The imagination. There's certain things that would trigger me, and there's certain things now that will trigger me. And I have to be aware of one of my triggers. If I'm aware of a trigger, that's what releases the fire pin, which releases the bullet. My emotion, unaware that I'm still hurt there, is now a different, a different element. Not just I have a trigger that releases me in a direction, I also have a fuel of hurt that's causing, now this is the gunpowder. This is what's going to happen. You still want to taste the gunpowder of the bullet. So when we look at these things, I love what you said about the surrender because we don't know what's about this. Because this is what I love. God will literally restore you and walk you up to your abuser in restore, when you're in restoration. And there will be no effects. I'm not saying you've got to trust your abuser. You ain't got to trust those certain people but when you really walk this thing out, you can really give them the greatest gift ever, which is forgiveness. And so, because I don't want to just come because some people don't just have addiction. Some people just, some people have been free of addiction, but they're broken inside still. And so with that, uh, thank you for your uh, the, your analogy there and those Teslas, those expensive cars. Um, uh, let's talk about that expensive oil of the Holy Ghost. Amen? Amen. Amen. It's cost you everything. So, if we if we can't avoid it, talk about the pot and all. If we can't avoid it, we want to fill it with something temporary. That could be addiction. There are multiple, right? We want to fill it. I always use the analogy: the DOT is always testing asphalt. And no what it is, that's where you see patches. They're seeing how long that patch will stand up with a little bit of where they change the chemicals and the elements in it to fill a hole. That's what we do sometimes with our temporary, our power, our resources. We will test something, but let's split that. Why don't we now have faith in the sufficiency and allow Him to fulfill it? Because if it's a temporary thing, eventually it will be a hole. Right? So, this process stunts our emotional growth because of emotional pain from events or situations from the past. Hang on, maybe you're restored from the past. No. You've been healed. Now you are, God has put you in ministry. And I ain't talking about pulpit. I'm talking about, if you, got, you got literally your pulpit is a cubicle. It's a janitorial closet. Is a working station somewhere. Is a mechanic. Is a whoever. Or whatever your profession is. If that is now your pulpit. And now my test is my response to somebody with something crazy to say. I'm not responsible for what they say. I'm responsible for my response and how I respond. And so emotional wounds, jacked up thinking, lack of better words, vain imaginations, or my, my will absent of the will of the Father could cause my response to not be God's response, right? And it's not that we don't miss it, we all do. But this gives us the ability to stay home. Because you can be restored from all the old when he was little. A new person. And really function good. But now how do you deal with the one that cuts you off in traffic tomorrow? Right? Real life. This, this is why it's vital to spend time with God. And have faith that he is a good Abba Father. Abba is daddy, all forgiving, all loving. But father meaning he having access because he has authority. He is one that says, you know what? I love you enough to rebuke you. I love you enough to there is a blind spot. And I didn't smack you up in the head of the form of abuse. I chastised 
You will have faith that God knows the best way. For, hang on, it's a question. Will you have faith that God knows the best way for you to recover? Now, a lot of times when you hear addiction, automatically we think about recovery and we think about rehab or outpatient, stuff like that, inpatient, all that stuff, right? But let's simplify this today a lot. Will you have faith that God knows the best way for you to recover when you go? Okay, y'all got your checklist, the click list, or whatever. You got everything that says everything's there and ain't nothing there. They ain't the things you need one day. You depended on that. This is that meal you already had on your list for that week. That's the real moment, right? Now, men sometimes can play that down, but that was a real moment because all the planning, all the stuff that was in place for the wife um, or the man that was doing the meal, right? That it, it, it was a real moment. So healthy or emotional intelligence says by faith, I'm processing this. Because I both have been saying something very profound about their emotions and their things. Faith now pulls me because nobody can tell me how I should feel. Now they can try. People try. You know, suck it up. You ain't supposed to cry. You a man. That's a way of carnality. And not, that's nothing about God, right? I think it takes more faith to process your emotions than it does to build a ministry. There is plenty of ministries that cover up and are broken. The person that's leading the ministry. Or the people leading the ministry. I think it takes more faith to process your emotions because you've got to be so dependent on God to now not suppress it with ministry, with work, or any other thing you're codependent to. Because true ministry is ministering as the Lord. So when I give him my emotion, and I said, this is how I feel. And God, you already know what I'm thinking. This is what I'm thinking. I didn't put him in hell out, but I felt like it. You know, real life, right? I think that's where real faith comes in. Because when you can truly walk with the Holy Ghost and allow him to process your emotion, your mental capacity that you're in in that current state, your imagination of different illuminations. Look, God's plan and expected in is still the same. It hasn't changed. It's by faith that we stay on the tracks. When you started speaking earlier, I started seeing a train going down the track. Right? But that track still leads to the same place. So true faith will be evident and the health of your soul. Made a decision to turn our wills and lives over to the care of God through Jesus Christ, our spiritual navigation as we end in this. I want to talk about three images. Our actual image, which is naked, broken before God. Oh. A true ministry that is of God will have a dimension of such transparency because it says the same God that led them out of brokenness now will lead me out. Projected image. Taking unwanted emotions or traits you don't like about yourself and attributing them to someone else. So now I deflect. I project this on some. Have, have you ever seen anybody deflect? I mean, I did it before myself. But it's easy now to project and say, I literally had this conversation today. I was really trying to help this young man out. And I was talking to him and I was like, did you see and learn a lesson through I'm trying to be careful because we're live um, and it's nobody that's a part of anything here. But I said, did you learn your lesson through now the results that you can't 
do these certain things anymore. And he, the individual, the young man, projected his image as like, because my question was, did you learn your lesson? And this was his response after he told me his backstory and why he done what he done and all that, right? He's project, he's deflecting and now projecting. This is his projection. He says this, as long as he learned his, talking about the other individual, as long as he learned his lesson. Sometimes we project things on other people without ever. I'm going to tell you what, I have more of you in this room. And anybody I come in contact with more mad at me sometimes because I know you want to tell me your part. You already told it to me seven times. We can't control what they've done to you. We can only control your response to what they've done to you. The breaking agreement of it. And so that's the hard place because now I can't project this on my abuser. I can't project this on life. I can't project it. They say it's your fault. What happened to you? But what is it your fault or your responsibility is your response to what happens. Projected image. Perceived image. Now this is one of the biggest, this exposes religion. And I'll lose about seven people if we got that many alive. Um, right now. I can put all of this stuff on Facebook and be perceived as this. I can paint you a picture that I'm all this, but in, internally, way I'm walking around and walking life is broken. So I want you to perceive me this way. This is this deals with approval addiction. This deals with man and now you must now every, I, mean, I want you to like me. I'm not gonna say that. I don't. But I'm not living life to, to, to cause you to like me. I want to be relational with you. I want to grow with you. I want to do life with you. So I don't what? I don't want to put a perception for you to see that I look this way, but I'm really, this is the real back here. Religion tells you to cover it up. Relationship brings you into a place that's of exposure, vulnerability, but with Christ Jesus now, by faith, I come into the perception of Him. I'm naked and broken before Him. I'm vulnerable. He made me in his image and Jesus has now restored me to that image in other words. So I want y'all to think about that as we land this plane. Um, actual image, naked, broken before God, vulnerable. Projected image, uh, taking unwanted emotion or traits that you don't like about yourself and attributing them to someone else. Perceived image is now why I'm causing you to see me but not in the reality of the real so, I'm going to give you two things. This is on homework sheet or our, our work in this process sheet. You've got the prayer of repentance, which is Psalms 15, or 51. And you ain't got to be, you don't have to commit adultery or murder to be, you need a prayer of repentance daily. Repentance keeps you in a lifestyle of worship. And maintain deliverance. So I must, he's deliverer not of just, he didn't just cast the demons out. He's deliverer of my soul. So now I maintain the new. Right? Psalms 139, 23, and 24. So that's some scriptures. Um, you'll find your originality, your story in Psalms 139. Even though it's King David, there's a revelation because it talks about a book was written about you. And you come into the revelation that there is a perfect plan, but not just for you to check a list to be in ministry or do religious and have all these accolades, but to walk. No matter if I made my bed now. No matter if I was in heaven. No matter if I was in the hardest of days or the best of days, you're present. But the maintaining of that is 
Psalms 139, 23, and 24. 1 through 22 is saying, God, I know your name. That's my hope. But by faith, when I welcome you in, the manifestation of you is here, man. Of my hope. So, faith is our spiritual principle tonight. Facebook, we love you. We appreciate you. Um, uh, uh, please share this. Go back and watch the replay. We will be back on with the spiritual principle of courage next week. We'll be praying for you. Anything you need to put in the comments, we will pray and push. Uh, the intercessory team will war with it, and you will see your breakthrough. But build yourself in faith tonight because it's not over. The train is still on the track. The power of God is still pushing it, and you will make it. The destination is eternity with Jesus of Nazareth, and you will finish this white race. You will run this race, and even as you all track, I was off track. The hope is the track's still there, and the wheels are still on your feet. Your life is still painted, and still there's a plan. And I want you to understand tonight that Jesus of Nazareth is waiting for an invitation to the current situation, search, uh, the, 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 the circumstances of what's going on and by faith you will find that place of peace. Nothing broken. Nothing missing. Love you. Appreciate you. And until next time, have a blessed evening. In Jesus' name.